Hello, welcome to the Math 9 Chapter 8 review video. So this is a review, hopefully you've gone through Chapter 8 already, you've done your homework, you're just getting ready for the test. I'm just going to go over quickly some of the main points and just highlight some questions that you may find in your review uh, that would be applicable. So I'm going to, uh, I have all the answers to my questions here up. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sh kind of show you everything at once, go through the, the main points with you and uh, walk through you through the uh, solutions to the uh, questions so you can kind of see everything all at once and jump around if you want. So the first point I'm going to talk about here is a tangent line. All right, well a tangent line, what's a tangent line? Remember a tangent line is a line that passes not through the circle, okay? So this is not a tangent line there. That's in your course you call that a chord, okay? Or it's also called a secant line. But if it passes through the circle and hits the circle twice, it's a chord and a tangent would be this line down here where it doesn't pass through but it does touch the very edge of the circle okay that's a tangent so it touches the circle at one point not two and uh, this peak is called the point of tangency okay so it's a it's a line that touches the circle once at the point of tangency and what's interesting about this is that if you draw a radius so that's a line from the center of the circle to the edge of the circle and if that radius ends up at the point of tangency, you always know that this is 90 degrees. That's very, very important. So I'm going to get rid of this chord up here. And uh, if we have another tangent, let's say we have a tangent that is right here and it touches just at this one point. Well, if you draw a line from there to the center, that is a perfect 90 degree angle. It doesn't matter where that tangent line is. Oh, that's a bad line. But that's also 90 degrees. Okay, so a tangent to a circle is perpendicular to the radius. Perpendicular means it makes a 90 degree angle. Okay, so here's a question from your chapter 8 review, number 1b. And uh, so it gives you this question, it asks you for y and for a. So what we need to know is that pt is a tangent here. See that? It touches the circle just at this one point, so that means that this is 90 degrees. I can then solve for y pretty easily because I know that 90 plus 54, that's the other angle here, 90 plus 54 plus y has to equal 180. So you do that subtraction and y equals 36. So there we have y taken care of. Now we also know that um, a is part of a right triangle. And so we have a, we have 7, and we have 12. So we can use Pythagoras' theorem here, right? And solve for a. Get that 7 squared over the other side and do the square root. And we get about 9.7. Okay, so there's, uh, there's 1b. Uh, on your chapter 8, I think that's 1B, I don't know what number that is, but anyways, it's in your chapter 8 review, and that helps us to understand the first point. All right, the second point from 8.2, uh, the perpendicular from the center of a circle to a chord bisects the chord. All right, so we talked already about a chord, right? This is a chord, and it is a line that is drawn from one point on the circle to another point in the circle. doesn't matter where it is. It could be a a long chord that goes like this could be a short chord here okay those are chords and the interesting thing about this is that um, the perpendicular from the center of the chord uh, sorry from the center of the circle bisects the chord so bisects means it splits it exactly in two and notice they have these two lines here that means that a b is exactly the same length as b c and so um, I'm gonna draw another one here watch this if um, if I draw a perpendicular, <clears throat> excuse me, a perpendicular line from this chord to the center, right there, that's 90 degrees, that means that this length is exactly the same as that length. It cuts that chord in the middle, no matter where you put it. So I'm going to go, look at this, this chord here. So right here makes a 90 degree. And my program just quit on me. <laughs> it's going to do it again too, I bet. Uh, this happened yesterday. So that's a 90 degree. And this means that this side and this side would, would be equal as well. So that's what bisects mean. It means it exactly splits it in half. Okay. Uh, what about this? A line segment that joins the center of a circle to the midpoint of a chord is perpendicular. So that's saying the exact same thing except from the other way. If you know, uh, if you know that this is the midpoint of this chord, then this line connecting to the center has to be perpendicular. It has to be 90 degrees. So it's really saying the same thing. So here's number 5b on your review, and this question asks you to identify what x is. Okay, well, um, what you want to do is you want to notice that 
this little point right here, or sorry, this, this little line right here, that little tick mark and this little tick mark means that this is, um, these are the same length for each side. So that means that this is a 90 degree angle. Okay. Because here's the center of the circle. And so what we have here is we have the pieces of a right triangle, right? And this side right here just happens to, well, that's a bad line. It just happens to be a radius. See, from the middle to any point on the circle is a radius. So I can go from this point to this point, and that is a radius. It's really bad drawing. I apologize. But what, what does that mean? Well, that means that because the diameter, the diameter all the way across the middle is 16, the radius has to be 8. And so you get this um, right triangle right here. And you can use Pythagoras' theorem. Remember, you had to add 7 squared plus x squared. Those are the two legs. Equals 8 squared, which is the hypotenuse. That's the longest side in, in the right triangle, opposite of the 90 degree angle. And you can do, uh, do your math there. Take the square root. And here's what you get, the square root of 15 or 3.87. All right, that's what x equals for that one. Question number five. Okay, the next point here, uh, also in 8.2, says the perpendicular bisector of a chord in a circle passes through the center. Again, very, very similar to those last two that we just studied, right? This is a um, perpendicular bisector. That means that this chord right here is cut in half. And it's a 90 degree, so that means that it must, this line must eventually travel through the center. Okay? That's really three different ways to look at the same thing, isn't it? Okay? Very, very similar. So, uh, how does that apply? Well, here's number seven, and I'm just going to erase this so you can kind of see what, where I went here. Okay? Um, so, what is, what is X and what is Y? Well, uh, in this, so we have a chord. This is a chord right here, right? And if I split this chord in half so that this side equals that side, I would make a 90 degree uh, angle here. Okay, well, what does that mean? Well, because this is a radius and this is a radius, do you see how we have an isosceles triangle? Uh, that is a triangle that has two identical side lengths here. See how I did that? Which means that this angle must equal this angle. Or you can look at it as two identical right triangles. So x is 35. Now what is y? Well, um, 35 plus 35 plus y has to equal 180, right? So that's y equals 180 minus 70, so y is 110. Okay, x is 35, y is 110. So all of these little properties, you, you can put them together to solve all sorts of different problems. Okay, next point here. I think we only have a few left here, so we're getting on. Um, I want to highlight this word, subtended. That's a really strange word, isn't it? Let's read this sentence. The measure of a central angle. So a central angle would be an angle made um, by two radii and the, the center of the circle. Okay, So that's a central angle right here, the, this angle. Um, a cent the measure of a central angle subtended by an arc. Okay, so an arc is a part of the outer edge of the circle. This is an arc, okay? And this angle subtends this arc right here, subtends. It sort of means like what, you know, when you're tending to a situation or you're tending a garden or something like that, that means you're kind of look, taking care of the whole thing. Well, that's kind of like taking care of the whole thing. You're tending this part of the circle, okay? So it's subtended. This is the arc. This angle subtends this arc right here, okay? Got it? So the central angle subtended by an arc is twice as big, twice the measure of an inscribed angle. Now an inscribed angle would be an angle made from a point on the edge of the circle. That's in the circle. It's inscribed inside the circle that subtends the same arc. All right, now, so the relationship is this, is I have this angle that's the point is on the outer edge and this angle whose point is in the middle. They're connected if they attach to the circle at the same point. Okay, so both of these angles subtend this arc right here. Both of them do. If one's in the middle, one's on the edge, there's a relationship. And that relationship is this central angle is twice as big as this one. Always. And you can kind of see that that looks reasonable, doesn't it? So how does that work for this question over here? Well, um, let me just erase part of this anyways. So um, you see how this is given to be 120. Now notice that this is a central angle that subtends this arc A that I've written down here, see, A. 
So that's 120. Now, if I can find other angles that have that subtend the same arc, but that are inscribed, like this X right here, see that? Connects to the circle at the exact same points as the middle one, middle angle. So the X is what? Yeah, it's half of 120. Now the interesting thing is, no matter where on the circle this angle exists, as long as it subtends the same arc as this central angle, it's still half. So this Y is 60 as well. And you know what? I can make another 60 degree angle pretty easy. Watch this. Boom. And boom. That is 60 as well. It has to be because it's inscribed and it subtends the same arc as this given central angle. So I know it's half as big. All right. Now I drew this over here too because this, this may look a little strange, but this, this is a central angle of 220 right here. You see, it's, it's an obtuse angle. Okay. It's, it's, well, it's actually it's a reflex. It's a reflex angle, I think it is what it's called. Um, it's greater than 180, but it still subtends this arc. You see, look at it. I'm going all the way around the circle here. It's subtending this arc. That's a big arc. That's a big portion of the circle. But guess what? This this angle this angle right here is an inscribed angle that subtends the same arc. So if this is 220, guess what this one is? 110. Okay, it's half as it's half as big. So you might not run into this. I'm not sure if I'll give you a question like this, but just in case, follow the rules. And this rule just talks about central angles and arcs. It doesn't they don't have to be acute, they don't have to be obtuse, they don't have to be, you know, um, central angles and arcs. Okay. All right, where are we? We're we're almost done here. Oh, this is the last little bit. Okay, all inscribed angles subtended by the same arc are congruent. Well, that makes sense. We actually saw that in this one, didn't we? X and Y, they're in both inscribed and Z as well. They're all inscribed and they're all 60. This is just saying that, hey, you need to notice that officially. So if you've got this arc right here, any angle, any inscribed angle, they're all the same length, uh, the same measurement. Um, this one's interesting too, and it's very, very reasonable. I think it's very understandable. All inscribed angles subtended by a semicircle our right angles. Okay, where do we get that from? Well, check this out. What's the central angle here made by A, O, B? Well, it's 180. Now, A, O, B is also a diameter, right? That goes through the middle from one side of the circle through the middle to the other side. That's a diameter. So if it's a 180, guess what? This angle has to be half of 180, right? If it subtends the same arc down here, which it does, they end in the same part of the circle. So 180, 90. Okay, it's really the same as the same as uh, you know this one here, right? It's half the measure. Okay, so hopefully, hopefully this is all fitting together. I know you've uh, learned this already, but you know, hopefully in this review, this stuff is kind of piecing together a bit for you. All right, so let's take a look at this here. This is number two in your practice test, and this is the one that I found that kind of encompasses some of these last couple points. All right, so this looks really, really complicated, doesn't it? I mean, there's a lot going on here, but don't don't freak out, okay? The first thing that I saw when I looked at this, of course, we have to do X, Y, and Z, right? You have to figure those out. The first thing that I saw was this big 122 jumping out at me, okay? Now, that's a central angle there, and it subtends this bottom arc here, okay? There's the angle. Now, notice that this angle right here subtends the same arc. It ends in the same spots over here. So guess what? X is one half of 22 or 61 degrees, okay? That's the first thing that I noticed. The second thing that I noticed here was why, if you notice here, uh, B, E is a diameter. So that means that this is 180. Subtends the same arc, this has to be 90, okay? So that's the second thing that I noticed. Now this last part, I think, this last part, um, Z, may be a little more complicated. Okay, a little more complicated. But this is how I this is how I did this. Um, I looked at this this central angle over here. Why? Because this central angle subtends this arc on the circle, right? And angle F subtends the same arc. So if I know this angle, I know that this one is half of that central angle. See that? So, um, what did I do? Oh yeah, I think I erased something here. 360 minus 122 is 238. 
that means that this angle is 238. See that? So this angle F, or I, I wrote it as DFE, that's technically the best way to do that. D, angle DFE is half of 238, which is 119. Okay. Where do we go from there? Well, I need Z. I don't need F, right? I don't need that one. So what do we do there? Well, notice that this is an isosceles triangle. That means that these two angles have to be equal. And if I know this one, 119, then I simply notice that, hey, this is a triangle. All of them have to add up to 180. So 180 minus 119 equals 2 times Z. If you do your math there, so, you know, combine this and divide both sides by 2, you get an angle Z equaling 30.5 degrees. So that's a way you could tackle this, uh, you know, problems that look very complicated like that. Just take one piece at a time and use your, uh, use the, um, the rules that you've learned about in chapter eight. Okay. So again, there's a quick review on chapter eight. Hopefully uh, that makes sense. Just going to go over these little points. I'll show you those as we conclude. And uh, yeah, study hard for your test. I hope that goes well. Okay. That's math nine, chapter eight review. See ya.